So in this video, I'll show you two ways how you can uh, create codes in Scrintle using Scrintle. Uh, if you're not familiar with Scrintle, I have another video in which I introduce this platform and I explained that it's just a very good uh, tool, mainly for visualizing, mind mapping, uh, reflecting, but also for organizing things. So I do have a video in which I showed you uh, how to use it for organizing your literature review, doing your literature, annotating stuff and highlighting stuff, etc., etc. So uh, you can collaborate in Scrintle. So all kinds of things that you can do. Like I said, uh, there is another video about it. In this video, I'll show you uh, how you can use it for a data analysis, for qualitative data analysis, for thematic analysis. And specifically, I'll, I'll start uh, by showing you two different ways how you can code. So one of these ways will involve uh, just using Scrintle, the other one will involve some previous work done in Microsoft Word and then using Scrintle. Obviously, this is not uh, specifically software that's been designed for qualitative data analysis, hence there are different ways, different uh, methods that uh, that, I, uh, that you can use to kind of work around that. But if you're using Scrintle already, for example, for your literature review, it does sound like a good idea to stick to it. So why not uh, analyze your data in the same way? Uh, on the same platform. Uh, as you know, I do use NVivo. That's my job. I use NVivo professional software. However, for any reason, if you maybe you don't have access, you, you can't afford it, maybe you just don't like NVivo. For any reason, if you're looking for something, let's say more visual and maybe less uh, overwhelming, that's what you can uh, use for your data analysis. So for our hypothetical study, the study we're working on uh, in this video, uh, we're looking at interviews with uh, some crew of a uh, fishing boat. So fishing boat crew, it's an international fishing boat. There are people coming from different cultures, different linguistic and cultural uh, and national backgrounds. And we're trying to uh, get to know, we're trying to explore their lived experiences. So is there anything they struggle with? Is there Are there any challenges? Are there any ways uh, to overcome these challenges? Or maybe we can make some suggestions for how to improve uh, this situation in the future. So that's our hypothetical study. We have two interview transcripts and that's what we'll be working on. So uh, so the first way is uh, involving just Scrintle. So it's not no work required outside of Scrintle. It's just purely coding the data in Scrintle. So let's go and I'll show you how to do it. So first what we're looking at here are my boards. I did explain in the first video what these are. It's basically your workspace. You can create an unlimited number of boards. Uh, and as you'll see throughout this series, where I when I later progress towards some more advanced coding, because in this video we're just talking about the initial coding, uh, you can create boards for anything. You can create boards for your separate themes later for anything you want. So uh, let's uh, create a new board. Uh, I'll just call it example study. And uh, this is basically our workspace. This is basically our, our workspace. So this first method involves uh, bringing in interview transcripts and creating them as our cards, our cards. As I explained in the other video, cards are the essence of work uh, with Scrintle. So basically, uh, these are our little tools for organizing everything. So I'll just entitle the card interview one, press enter. And as the content of the card, I'll just bring the first interview. So copy and paste from what I already had uh, in Microsoft Word. I'll just paste it here, close our card, and this is my first interview. And I'll create another one, interview two, and do the same thing, except that this time I'm copying and pasting another transcript. So that's uh, what it is. So we, we just brought our interviews here. You can uh, open any of these interviews. You can uh, change the size of it so you can actually read the full transcript from Scrintle, or you can even uh, go into full screen mode just like this if that makes it easier for you. So uh, so that's what you can do. You can change the color. So if you right click, uh, you can change the color of the card. Uh, we'll use it later as well. We'll need the colors later. It doesn't make it, uh, a difference what it is now, but I just want to be consistent. And as you'll see throughout this, uh, this series, this training, uh, the colors will become important later because later we do want to indicate the codes and where they come from. So this first way of creating codes is basically creating more cards or links in Scrintle. So if I uh, open any of these, so I start with interview one, 
uh, as I keep reading, I'll just be creating links. So let's go through some basic introductions. And now there's a question. How about how do you describe the multicultural dynamics? So we do have a pretty diverse crew, people from different countries. Um, that's what I want to code. So uh, if you're interested in how to code or how to name the codes, what to look at, you know, what to look for with coding, I do have separate videos for this. I have a whole series in which I describe the whole process and I talk about going from codes to themes, essentially. Uh, that's where I, uh, I dive deeper into the topics of, you know, the practical considerations with codes here. Uh, I'm just showing you how to use this tool, how to use screen tool. So if you uh, so if you select any piece of text, this kind of menu appears, and the first one on the left is uh, creating links. So that's what we'll be doing. So we'll be creating links, essentially new cards. So uh, this is about having diverse crew. So let's click on this, and I'll just call it dive, having a diverse a diverse crew. As I press enter, what happened here? is a new card was created. So I'll just close it for now. I don't really need any content in this card. It's just a little kind of a note to myself that it exists. It's a code, essentially. Uh, you can still change the color. I'll actually do it later as I have more of these. I'll just change all the, uh, the colors of each uh, one of them. And you can also change the layout. So if you just keep clicking, I can make it just into a nice small box. So that's the first code. And then I just keep going. So. Uh, at first, I was challenging, especially with language barriers, cultural differences. Uh, so another code, I can just call it, you know, initial challenges, initial uh, linguistic challenges, press enter. There is another one that we have. So we are creating codes. Remember, we can uh, kind of collapse them if it's becoming overwhelming because of what I said before. Uh, let me just collapse it. Uh, there will be lots of codes and you know that many codes is a good thing. So uh, as you can see, they are uh, they are connected to our, uh, our interview transcript. That's something that happens in Scrintel. You can either manually uh, create these connections or if we're doing what I'm doing now, creating these links, uh, it just uh, assumes this, this relationship, this connection. So this one for some reason became disconnected, but we can manually connect it back. So uh, these are basically our codes. We can store them in maybe slightly more organized way, ideally, if we continue if, uh, to code, if we plan to have lots of codes. Uh, also, as I hover over any of these, any of the text, it, it shows me the name of uh, the codes I'm creating. So if, you, if we just create something here, let's say uh, being patient, and open-minded as a way to overcome challenges. So uh, being patient and open-minded, press enter, that's another one. Uh, and as you can see, if I hover over this uh, piece of text, it shows me the codes. Same thing happens if I go to the full screen mode. So later, if you wanna, uh, if you wanna see what you coded, you can just hover and see your codes. So now I'll just uh, continue to code or create a few more codes so that I can show you later what I would do next. So as you can see, I created a few more so I can move this board now. So I created a few more for this interview. Uh, now I can just change their color. So just to make sure that we're consistent, we can change all these colors. We can change all of it uh, for the future, as I said, so we know where they come from. And I can also uh, use this different view, as I said, for all of them. So that either this view or this view, where it's kind of uh, easier to manage. And I'll do the same thing for interview two. So now I can uh, move this a little bit. You can uh, move it, you can zoom in and out. So there's plenty of space. You can have 50 interviews probably here, although it would probably be overwhelming, but that's, uh, that's what we have. And now I'll just uh, start coding this one. So again, I've been doing some coding, as you can see, let me just zoom out. There are uh, quite a few codes that I also created for this interview too. Now I'll just select all of them. And similarly, I will change the color. So I'll make them green. This will be important now soon. And I'll change the layout. So it's a little bit clearer. So um, what do we want to do now? Uh, what do we want to do now is to 
kind of make sense of this. Of course, this is just an example. You could have many more codes, in which case, as I said, you can just organize them, for example, in much better way than I did. So you can actually have a nice list of everything. Uh, in addition to that, you have plenty of space. You can have, you know, many more interviews. But what happens now and any uh, at this stage, in any case, whether you're using some other software or not. So if you've followed my videos, you know that what happens is that we have to make sense of it. We have to try and somehow gather all these codes in one spot and try to make sense of them, try to make sense of them, put them into some some sort of groups or something that seems to make sense, some some kind of topics uh, that they have in common. So for this, I usually I would create uh, a different board. So add a new board, I'll just call it uh, coding, coding organized, organized. That's my board. And what I'll do, I'll be uh, copying things from that board. So example study, these are the codes that I need to copy. So actually, I just copy all of them first, right click, copy, go to my board, coding organize, right click and paste. Now you can either duplicate or add these items. I want to duplicate because what it means is that I'll be working on these things and changing them around and this will not affect the originals. If I add them, what happens is that if I change, for example, the name of a of a code or a or, or a card in this board on this board, it will also change the name on the original board. So you may have a some reason to do it in some circumstances, but for now, I do not need it. So, uh, so what it did is brought everything nicely, brought everything back. And now, what uh, we want to do now, so that's the next step, is to read these. So that is. Uh, with any coding, with any software, uh, read this and try to understand what you have a lot of, for example, so what kind of topics. You don't really need the interview one at this point, so uh, let me just remove it from the board. And same with this interview too. We don't need it at this point, so we just need the codes. So I can see, of course, I know what, what I've been coding, so, uh, so I can already tell you, I can see there are lots of things about, for example, challenges and lots of things about uh, suggestions as well as ways to overcome challenges. So for this, you can either just create uh, another card or you can create a text and just call it, let's say, challenges. It basically, it will be just heading. I do prefer to create a card because uh, if I decide to later link these codes to it, I can and I cannot link it to a text. So I'll call it challenges. So that's my card for challenges. Uh, I can also create another one here for um, suggestions, for example. And what happens now from this point uh, onwards, I'm going through my codes and basically moving them to, uh, to one group or another. So I do have another one. So let's create a, a, a one about overcoming challenges. Overcoming challenges. So what happens now, we start to take these and, and move them to where they belong. So cultural uh, differences, being patient and over-minded is about, uh, and open-minded is about overcoming challenges, discussing problems is about overcoming. So basically I'm visually moving them for now to uh, so that I'm I'm I can distinguish between the different codes about the different topics and from there later I'll be kind of doing a cleanup within the groups uh, I'll be distinguishing between the different uh, themes trying to think uh, of themes and developing themes but that's something I'll show you in uh, the next video and in this video as I promise I'll also quickly show you another way uh, a way that involves uh, some uh, some work in Microsoft Word prior to switching to Scrintel. I do have a whole video about using Microsoft Word for coding. So that's so I won't be going into detail of uh, how to doing, but in essence, uh, you create two, uh, you create a, a table with two columns. Uh, on the left hand side, you keep the interview transcript and on the right hand side, we keep, uh, we create our codes. So uh, you're reading, creating codes on the right hand side. Uh, this is something you just do in Microsoft Word. Like I said, I do have a video about it, so feel free to watch it if you need to. And now, uh, if we want to combine this with Scrint also, uh, so doing this in Microsoft Word is kind of 
good but then uh, obviously the further it gets the more difficult it gets because you lack uh, Microsoft Word lacks this kind of visual representation tool so uh, so sometimes it may become overwhelming but if you're combining this with Scrintle you can just copy and uh, uh, copy all the codes and in this case what I'll do I'll create another board so let's just add a new board so imagine we're just starting over and basically I would create a card this time for each interview so interview one for example press enter paste all my codes so these are my codes and I would uh, do the same for uh, for interview two interview three etc etc so you do have to code each interview uh, separately first and then after this so I'm not gonna create these new cards now for interview two and three uh, but after this you're opening your interview cards with you know each card listing your codes and here just like I did in that previous presentation I'm creating a card for example for challenges I'm creating a card for um, strategies or whatever good practices and whatever else you know comes to my mind and I'm just going through uh, these codes for each of the interviews uh, going through them so for example honoring diverse cultural rituals I'm cutting and pasting them into strategies adaptability cut and paste to strategies uh, so basically I'm taking them off this one and pasting them where they belong the point is uh, I'm creating new cards for groups of code so it's a little bit different it has less cards as you can see it just has a few cards and a lot more uh, text so it also depends on the different styles I suppose in which you learn what you prefer and how how you normally work more visual or more textual but in any case uh, we're we've only just created the initial codes we've done some uh, some uh, slight reorganizing uh, but we're still quite far from the final result of course because we still have to organize them more we have to uh, sort them out within each group because there will be duplicates there will be lots of calls about the same thing but they come from different interviews so they have different names so we do have to uh, deal with these codes somehow then eventually move on to uh, creating themes and that's something that I address in the, uh, the next the remaining videos of this series